There's no panacea to the pandemic right now, although we're closer to a treatment. But how much hope can we put in old drugs? I got to tell you, I watched the first dosage and don't believe I've ever prayed over a medical procedure as hard as I prayed over that 30 minutes, uh, hoping that this was in fact uh, going to be helpful to me and prove uh, that it could be helpful for others. We, we welcome the recent data on the randomized control trial that has been done in the United States, and there's uh, signals of hope there for the potential use of the drug. It's not a game changer. It doesn't change the fact that we have a terrible pandemic, that many people tragically will die from it. The search for a COVID-19 cure walks a fine line between the urgency of finding a drug and the long process of testing if it does more good than harm. I'm Ben Fazool and welcome. We're not going to get a new wonder drug for COVID-19 anytime soon, but old treatments for other diseases are in trials and could be repurposed. We'll talk to a pharmacologist about that in a moment. First look at some of the candidates. Remdesivir, Laronlimab, Lopinavir, Ritonavir, chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, just some of the many medications currently being tested as treatments for COVID-19. What they all have in common is that they were originally developed to treat other diseases. As yet, there are no reliable studies demonstrating safety and efficacy against COVID-19, yet politicians such as Donald Trump are hailing them as breakthroughs in treatment. Large quantities of chloroquine. Let's take a closer look at chloroquine, a product developed decades ago by German pharma company Bayer to treat malaria. The company, in fact, discontinued the sale of the product last year. But now, clinical trials investigating its use against the new coronavirus are producing promising results. However, while studies in China indicate it inhibits the reproduction of the virus, others are identifying dangerous side effects in patients, such as heart problems. The related medication, hydroxychloroquine, can actually increase the risk of sudden death. Combination medicine, lopinavir ritonavir. This was first developed to treat HIV and has been prescribed to children over two as well as adults. Clinical studies show it's highly effective as an antiviral. But a recent study with COVID-19 patients proved disappointing. Researchers believe the patients were treated too late and given too low a dose. Remdesivir, meanwhile, is hailed by many as the most promising treatment for COVID-19. U.S. pharmaceuticals company Gilead originally developed the drug to fight Ebola. It ultimately proved inferior to other drugs tested, but now clinical trials show that it can reduce the impact of the COVID-19 disease in some patients, cutting recovery time from 15 to 11 days and the mortality rate from 11.6 to 8% in study participants. But another study conducted in China failed to identify a reduced mortality rate. Still, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, is allowing emergency use of remdesivir to treat severely ill patients. Detlef Gunten is president of the World Health Summit. He's also a pharmacologist. Thank you very much for joining us. This is like a, a little trip to the chemist for me. Let's start with remdesivir. Would you prescribe that to me? Yes, it's being described and uh, it has been effective in Ebola. And it's one of the drugs which uh, are being used now for uh, the coronavirus. But the data so far are not that convincing. So the, there is still a discussion whether there are other, other drugs which might be more effective. That is why there are comparative trials now going on uh, to, to compare various drugs and, and de develop standards. What are some of the other drugs that were developed for other diseases like remdesivir? Well, it's uh, antiviral drugs like lupinavir and ritonavir. 
and it's antiviral drugs, uh, and there are anti-malaria drugs. So there's a whole variety of different drugs being tested. And there are two major trials going on in the world now to compare these various drugs. That's the uh, WHO uh, Solidarity Trial and the Oxford Recovery Trial. And there are other smaller trials going on also in our country. The Charité is coordinating some trials between all the German universities. So there's still uncertainty which drug really is superior to the other one. How problematic is it that one drug can't treat all symptoms of COVID-19? Well, it is problematic because uh, if, if you have a patient, you don't really know what to do and everybody tries the best and they observe the patient and they, they observe the symptoms, but there is no standard recommendation so far. Tell me, trials take forever. The drug needs to be safe. Is, is all that out the window now? Well, these drugs have been tested and they are safe for their uh, primary uh, indication. So uh, remdesivir was uh, tested for Ebola and there it is safe and, and, and it's being used worldwide. The same is for the anti-viral uh, uh, drugs of uh, other kinds, but they are not being uh, sufficiently tested for the uh, coronavirus and, and COVID-19. And that is still going on, but that is in a way not so surprising because uh, this came upon us uh, by surprise and it takes time to develop these world standards on, on drug treatment. Well, a lot of people would argue that we've been warned about this uh, for a long time, but you, you spoke about the global cooperations that are going on at the moment by the WHO, by the University of Oxford. Uh, are those sorts of trials uh, that are shared uh, around the globe, are they uh, one way of fast tracking this process? Well, these are drugs which are on the market already. So in a way, uh, it's comparative trials. They don't, we, you don't need new regulatory procedures to, uh, uh, to use them. So they are, they are, they are uh, on the market and they can be used. And it's just the indication, the new indication. But you have to be aware also of the fact that a, uh, an a infected person with the coronavirus uh, is in different stages. Some have very little symptoms, some are very heavy symptoms, some are on, on artificial respiration. So there again, there's a diversity of patients which need to be treated. And uh, it's not so easy to form groups and then test each drug at each stage of a patient, uh, sit on a patient situation. So it's a uh, it's, it's uh, not easy pharmacologically to really de develop standards and recommendations worldwide. And although it's not a total success, I'm told some of these drugs do minimise the time people spend in hospital, which is one of the biggest burdens in this crisis, is getting uh, enough hospital beds. Yeah, well, um, in order to, to uh, have this worldwide cooperation, and get as many patients as possible into standardized protocols and then test them, that's the best way to save time and to come up with uh, uh, the f as fast as possible with the uh, recommendations necessary. In the meantime, these drugs are being used and, and the results are being reported. So, so we, we gain experience as we treat. Pharmacologist and president of the World Health Summit, Detlef Ganten, thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Now to your questions on the coronavirus. Here's our science correspondent, Derek Williams. How long could this virus last in your refrigerator at home? I couldn't find any new studies addressing this question, although I'm sure that research into it is ongoing. But I did dig up one that looked at the reaction to temperature in the virus that causes SARS, which is a close relative of the new coronavirus. What that work showed was that SARS actually likes it when it's cold and dry. At, at 4 degrees Celsius, which is a, a temperature that's similar to that in an average refrigerator, it was able to survive for up to four weeks and was inactivated much more quickly at warmer temperatures. Now, that's no guarantee that the new coronavirus will respond in exactly the same way, 
but it seems pretty plausible that it won't mind the cold in a refrigerator really much at all. Um, still, before you go and start scrubbing your fridge out with bleach, don't forget that there have still been no confirmed reports of transmission of SARS-CoV-2 through food, so it seems pretty unlikely that you would get it from your refrigerator. Does antibacterial gel do anything against a virus like COVID-19? There are many different kinds of antimicrobial hand sanitizer products out there. Um, those that contain 60% or more alcohol are good at killing both bacteria and viruses like SARS-CoV-2. The alcohol breaks down the fatty membranes that enclose both types of microbes, but some antimicrobial products rely on, on other compounds to kill potential pathogens instead. And although they can be sold commercially, it's not clear if they're as effective against the new coronavirus as an alcohol-based sanitizer would be. A recent study says they aren't. Um, based on that research, the American Centers for Disease Control have warned that those non-alcohol-based products might be less reliable. So it's worth reading the label. Um, just keep in mind that even if it only says antibacterial, if a sanitizer contains more than 60% alcohol, then it'll kill SARS-CoV-2 as well. If you get COVID-19 and have pre-existing conditions like hypertension or diabetes, should you stop taking your medicine for those conditions? There are still no clear or direct links between specific medications and worse outcomes if you contract COVID-19, although there is a huge amount of speculation and conflicting advice on the internet. Um, I found a number of studies and non-peer-reviewed publications claiming to show risks, but I also found a few others that show none. When it came to this topic, however, pretty much every reliable healthcare source that I found did agree on one thing. They all said, if you take medication for pre-existing conditions, don't ever stop taking it before consulting with your physician. That's because the consequences of stopping a regular medicine from one day to the next can be very severe or, or even deadly. So please, don't make a decision like that on your own. Talk to your doctor beforehand. 